Shalom, shalom, shalom. I want to give all glory, all honor, and all praises unto Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem, Rakakadash. Giving all glory, all honor, and all praises unto the Most High Heavenly Father for all of what He has given unto us through His marvelous word. Not only just that, but through the Rakakadash and the Hebrew tongue, which means the Holy Spirit. Ultimately, I want to give peace and salutations unto the um, hopeful elect. Not only just that, but double honors unto the elder apostles of GMS. Rakatah, meaning bless you to those who are being diligent inside this truth and doing the best that they can when it comes down to keeping the commandments to the Most High Heavenly Fathers to the best of their abilities, as well as carrying on the faith of the Hamashiach Yahushai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. But as I always make it known, it's all about the kingdom, maybe so all glory, all honor, and all praises be unto the Most High Heavenly Father. So, um, I'll talk and everything right after this, but the title of this video is called Second Edges, chapter 15 and verse 16 is coming. So I'm just, um, you know, um, sharing this video, but at the same time, you know, I'm going to speak, you know, um, according to what the spirit was bringing to me, because I made a video on this, uh, days ago, you know, on YouTube, you know, here on YouTube. Um, and, um, this is, this is, this, this is, this is something that's, that's just by the spirit, you know, the Rakaka Dash. So take heat. And that's why evil wants to cut the resources off, because they want to force you into a position in a barbarous, murderous, evil world where you've got to do bad things just to feed your family. And I'm not going to lie to people, and I didn't last year when that rant went viral and got 50 million views or whatever about eating my neighbors, which was a honest proposal 2.0 from Jonathan Swift about if things really did break down the way the globalists want, you know, I probably would actually eat people. And I think you would too. 90 plus percent of people become cannibals. 10% either get eaten or commit suicide. And then the cannibals feed on each other. Now, I'm being honest with you about that. I don't want to be forced into that position. Because I would just starve to death. But I look at my four year old daughter. Well, she's got to eat. And I don't say this to be dramatic. I'm I don't say this to freak people out. This is the real world we're going into with seven and a half billion people and the global's turning off the world economy. Because if they get their full collapse they want, if they think they can get away with collapsing it, and they think they can get away with posing as the saviors when they are the, the conductors, when they are the masters, when they are the engineers of this, they will take it all the way. And that's why you see the military training for 20 years to take on zombies in an apocalypse. And the image of giant hordes of crazy, evil people running around eating each other. They admit, well, it's not legal to really train the military to mow down their own citizens. So we call it a zombie drill when the troops practice mowing down thousands of role players who would put green paint on their skin. They can be black, they can be white, they can be whatever, but we dehumanize them by saying they're a zombie, putting them in some rags, and, them go, and what do zombies want? What they don't have. Brains. So you can see it right there, you know. Um, his John Diego, his video Diego, uh, um, viral, you know. Um, and he was only speaking according to what, you know, you know him just being on a level of being realistic, and and you know on his level, and you know that's just the spirit that you know Yahabashimi Yahushua has put upon his, um, you know Sleazy E, you know what I'm saying, and um, you know because we know you know personally, you know through the scriptures, and I'm not saying this just to say it because it sounds good. I want y'all to understand this is this is something really real. You know, um, the Heavenly Father always makes it for himself to take care of his own, you know. Um, and you know, and the righteous, you know, uh, I know uh it's written, um, out of all the days of my living, have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor have I seized begging for bread, you know, and that's something um real, you know, and you know, in those times, in those days, it's, evil is gonna go to another level. And you're gonna have people doing things that they would never expect themselves, you know, to be doing, you know? And um, you can see that a lot of times in certain movies. Um, everybody have a regular way of living, but then when something catastrophic happens, their mindset begin to change and it becomes more savage-like. And in the midst of it becoming savage, you know, uh, and that change that goes on, they affect those who are around them. You see, where it equals out to being as only the strong will survive, you know? And in this case, the wicked taking out each other. And that's just the spirit that Yahabashim Yahushah has allowed to take place on the face of this earth to wake up, you know, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. 
you know, because there's more of us than them, you know, and, and the more you keep depending on, you know, this wicked kingdom and those who are running it, you know, the more you are having yourself to be a binding in curses. So let me uh, pull up the second entry chapter 15, verse 16, right? Because, you know, this, this, this speaks volumes, you know, already in second entry. Yeah. Second entry chapter 15. Verse 16. All right. It say, For there shall be sedition among men, right? And invading one another. They should not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. You see? You got to see that. It's going to go, it's going to go crazy. Let me bring that up back. I'm going to jump. I'm going to start at verse 14. All right. He said, woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Why, why would it be, you know, you got to really think about this. All right. He's saying, woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Because on those times, it's going to be evil. Right. Verse 15. For the sword. And who the one that been blessed with the sword? Sleazy E. Okay. Sleazy E. We already know who Sleazy E is. All right, he's been blessed with the sword, and that same sword is going to be a recompense set up against him when Yahweh Shah returns. Okay, for the sword and their destruction draw nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. You see, they're going to use what they got, their weapons, to try to defend themselves, to try to take out, you know, who they consider to be their enemies. You know, because the spirits that's going to be set upon them in those days. All right. And then jump in on verse 16. But there should be sedition among 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 men and invading one another. They should not regard their right. Their kings, nor princes and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. I mean, they're going to do whatever the hell they want to do. All right. Verse 17. A man should desire to go into a city and should not be able. Why? Verse 18. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Men will be afraid, women and men and children, many will be afraid. So they're going to result out to things, you know, as far as like, you know, they're going to be doing things out of fear, basically. A lot of things that many are going to be doing is going to be out of fear and them wanting to survive. Okay, verse 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. But shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread, meaning the famine, no food. So they're gonna result out to doing things that's gonna be, you know, um, savage like. They're gonna be cannibals. They're gonna be. They're gonna operate with that beastly nature, you know. And for great tribulation because of what's going on. And that's the type of spirit that Yah Bashimi is letting loose in these last days. All right. Let me go into uh, Second Edgar 16. In verse 17, all right, it say, um, woe is me, woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? Like, who's going to deliver you in those days? You see? And that's real. But we we, we have it like, you know, regardless of what, Yahab Bashim Yahushah is always going to make a way for the righteous. You know, no matter what, he's going to make a way for the righteous. He's going to make a way for those who diligently seek him. As it is mentioned in uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. You know how you will get rewarded based upon you diligently seeking them. And not only just that, but if you think about it, you know, um, the, the you know, the scriptures makes it known um um of um, not only just diligently seeking him and you get rewarded, you know, but it also shows forth of how he's going to take care of you. You see, he's going to take care of you. Out of all the days of my living, I've not seen the righteous forsaken. Nor seeing thy seeds begging for bread. You see? But let me go on. Verse 18. The beginning of sorrows. That's when, you know, sorrows. The times of hurting. And great mornings. You see? Many are going to be weeping, crying. The beginning of famine. Talking about the beginning stages of, uh, of recognizing like, yo, we really ain't got no food. And what did, it, what did we go through with the scriptures? When it talked about um, in verse um, 2nd Edges 15. When he's talking about, let me go back. You see? 
He said in verse 19, 2 Edges 15, 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but should destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So the lack of bread is what? The beginning of sorrows. I mean, I mean, not the beginning of sorrow, the beginning, yeah, it's the beginning of sorrows, but beginning of famine. Because famine is lack of bread, lack of food. You see? And so in verse 18, when he said the beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? You see, verse 19, behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. All right. And you know why these happen? Let me go to Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 2. It say, right, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. You see, the beginning of mourning. Remember, going to second address, um, chapter 16, you see. So it shows you, you know, right there, you know, off of the back that when the wicked are in rulership, right? things begin to fall down and crumble and many begin to mourn people get in fear people you know there's a lot of things that's done you know let me go into job chapter uh nine and verse uh 24 right it says let me highlight that one he said the earth is given into the hand of the wicked he covered the faces of the judges thereof if not where and who is he so basically you see when the wicked are in position Anything that's dealing with righteousness, they do the best that they can to try to cover it up. They do the best that they can to try to use deception, to try to, uh, to, to um, not so much just cover it up, but to try to uh, stir your attention away, to keep your, your mind occupied on the things that are desensitizing to you, okay? That's not feeding your spirit, man, you see? It keeps you desensitized. It keeps you lost to the truth, you see? They put the scriptures in front of you, the Bible in front of you, but they give you a doctrine, you see? They put the scriptures in front of you, but they put a doctrine in front of you to have your attention to be stirred in a direction, what will, in, in a way, what, in what will be fitting to what they already got established in society. This is why you got different branches and different uh, 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 forms of, of, um, of Christianity, but they're all what? White supremacy. And this is the truth, you see? Just to keep you away from knowing who you are, to keep us lost to who we are as a people. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who are considered to be the, um, the Israelites, the true Hebrews, you see? So the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, meaning the Most High allowed this to happen, to show us at the end of the day why his way is the only way, in the great way, the marvelous way, the safe way. You see what I'm saying? Everything else, it ain't gonna work. Anything outside of the will of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh is not gonna work. So what do we got to do in the midst today, right? Let's go to Psalm chapter 40, right? In verse 8, right? It states, I delight to do thy will. Meaning you got to delight yourself to do the will of Yahweh Bashem Yahushat. He said, I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Meaning you can't make it within yourself to, 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 to please Yahweh Bashem Yahushat by coming up with your own commandments, within your own stuff, like as far as what you want to do. If you do what you want to do and you lean into your own understanding, you're literally going to have yourself in a place of operating with a beastly nature. Okay? You're going to operate with, it, with a nature that's going to be uh, of the beast. You see, when you operate with the laws of Yahweh Shimei Awashah to the best of your ability, right? You have yourself to be in a place of operating with a righteous mindset, a spiritual mindset. You see? Because now you know what it means to take on discipline according to what is of the righteousness of Yahweh Shimei Awashah. And not what is of this world and this wicked ass kingdom. 